going to talk about the user section here. The user section is kind of like the create section where, you know, in, um, if you haven't seen the create video first, please go see that before you watch this because it'll make a lot more sense. And I can reference things about that with the user section. OK, so it's very important. Please pause this video, go check that out and come back. All right, perfect. Um, and again, if you're trying to find the videos, go to our website, infinite-tools and um, check it out there. You can see a bunch of different options, but as well as uh, uh, the manual, you can also see it in the manual too. So once I go to my user section, this area that you're actually going to click on first is plus sign. Before you do anything, click on plus sign, and it gives you option to right click for setup. So I'm going to right click. You can save your own personal layer stack here. So it's almost like the create button again, except you have more create buttons, if that makes sense. So in case you have maybe multiple workflows, maybe you have a second workflow for commercial work. You have, you know, these like three layers that you use just for commercial work and only three. Um, you can obviously save those layers by highlighting them, save personal layer stack, um, and that's it. And then if I right click, you can also change the name. I forgot to do that. I'll call this workflow two. You don't have to hit enter or anything. Like once you exit the typing area, it will save for you automatically. There's no, you know, it just knows once you're done typing to name the button that. So again, I click on it and it runs those same layers with the same names and everything. OK, so there you go. Um, another really great purpose of this is that let's say maybe you have an action that you like, like this Jasmine action um, that I have. Perhaps you like it, except you don't like the selected color layer. You think the opacity is too strong and you want to kind of bring it down a bit here. You want to add your own curve, maybe, you know, kind of really make it your own. And then you want to save it again. Well, guess what? Saving actions is not possible. You have to recode the action. So instead of that, what we could do here is I'm just going to make sure all the layers are highlighted. Um, and since I'm running it off the background, I'll just select the background as well. It's not going to save the background. Don't worry. It's only going to save these layers. But again, if you watch the create video, uh, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. So that, you know, uh, I have all these saved. I'm going to create a new uh, right click for setup. I'm going to call this like, uh, like this, like my version of that. I'm going to say save layer stack. All layers are saved. Fantastic. And now what I could do is if I go ahead and delete Jasmine and uh, I go back here, you can see I have my quote unquote action that uh, has the same layers now. So I've been able to save and modify actions that already exist. That is super handy. Another really great function is that if you saw the create video, you know that um, you cannot save solid pixel layers, like if you have a, a noise layer. So if you've ever run my actions before and you've used my workflow, you can see that I have uh, a grain option here on top, right? You physically cannot save that as your workflow stack because it's uh, it's it's filled in with different pixels. And we covered that in the, in the other video. So to circumvent the situation, what we did was um, over here, you right click, you can also execute an action. And since I already have grain as an action, I'm just going to go to my actions here, say, let's execute grain. And this could be anything, anything in your action stack that you want to incorporate back into it, you could do that. Um, and then you would just go back and then let me delete this again. So you can see everything from scratch and I click on it and then you can see it created the, uh, color grade and then added my grain layer here. So it, it's very versatile in that respect. And the create button itself, when you right click on it, it allows you to auto run an action too. So I could do the same thing, have my workflow run as well. And, and then just dump the grain on top if I want to. Um, so yeah, it's very, very flexible and customizable. And that's what I prefer using this user layers for. So if you have some action that you always want to use, you can plop them here. You simply need to right click set up and just say um, whatever action. Maybe I have an action that um, solar, uh, let's just do like um, red shift because that red shift is an action of mine. I'll click on auto run action and I'll find that red shift action like that. Again, you won't have these actions by default. I'm just using mine as an example. I'll say apply and that's it. You don't even have to save a personal layer stack if you don't want to, because once uh, the button name is there, 
and you've had an action already set, you just need to exit and click on it. And then the button will only run the action and nothing else. Okay, that's very important to know. These buttons can also be used to trigger individual actions you have. And that way, and the purpose of this is that once that's there, you can just close this tab out because you don't need the actions tab anymore because you already have the main ones that you use. So maybe you have a bunch of different actions in a bunch of different folders, but maybe you only use like three or four of them across all of them. And so you can do that here. You can customize these individual buttons to add a workflow, to save a workflow. You can use it to modify a color grade like we talked about earlier, or you can use it to run a individual action. So you can do all three different things and mix and match to get whatever it is that you're going to go for. You're going to start seeing how to use this as you go along. Because once you start modifying your retouch panel here, and then you're like, hmm, I wish, you know, maybe after running frequent separation, it would add a little bit of grain or whatever. You could do that there. So you can really trigger um, and, and daisy chain that off. And it makes it for a very fun and customizable workflow. So that's how to use user layers under the user tab on Infinite Retouch. Please visit our website for more. And, and if you haven't tried it, definitely pick up the trial, have a play with it.